Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to today's video. My name is Lucas. And today what I want to do is I want to kind of show you a workflow that I've been kind of, you know, addicted to for the past week or two. You know, in this channel, I like to talk a lot about how we can use AI in our day to day lives when it comes to designing or developing. And, you know, there's a lot of things when it comes to AI. Um, especially when it comes to control, when you're, when you're building out a digital product, right? You don't feel like you have that full control. And when it comes to design, for example, so imagine a world where you have something like Excaladraw or, or Miro, and you can basically draw out concepts. You can sketch out different concepts. And then with a click of a button, you can design that concept. So you're getting that raw, low fidelity wireframe to a high fidelity design with AI. And that design is not only just, you know, vectors and SVGs, like something like Figma would give you, but it's actually working code. And then you can, you know, connect it to cursor, connect it to your own custom domain, and then eventually start getting users. So in today's video, we're going to be doing just that. I'm going to be showing you that little process. So stick around and let me know what you think. But before we dive into today's video, I'd love to invite you guys to my discord community. We are a bunch of different startup founders, designers, developers, from all around the world. And we talk about different, you know, tools, topics, challenges that we're facing in our lives. On a daily basis, we meet, we meet up every weekday at around 11 a.m. Eastern time. So if you guys are interested in joining those calls, feel free to join the link to that is down in the description below. Anyways, I like to conceptualize different ideas in a very basic way. So I tend to go towards websites like this, excaladraw.com. And, you know, you can get something like, like this, right? You can get a, a rectangle and easily just start drawing things around. And obviously you can do this as well inside of a tool like Figma or like FigJam, right? But um, over here, I just, I just find this interface just much easier and you don't have to like go through all your different files and all of that. So it's a very easy way to just start and kind of you know, draw a diagram of what you want to build out. So in this case, you know, you can eventually like, we can uh, build some type of form. So I can go, let's say these two represent two input fields. And then we have one more that would represent like the email, like a little bit longer and then this one would represent like a drop down. And then over here we would have like an additional comments section. And then down here we would have different buttons. And over here we can say, all right, this, this is like an image uh, container and below the image containers, we have, you know, like different types of images that we, that the user can eventually um, switch in this kind of like little gallery section over here. And you can eventually just get these four and just the size to be a little bit larger. And eventually we have like a nice little concept of like a little form section that you can use in a website, right? So, if we go like this and we add like another rectangle like this, right? We have a nice little form section. Now, when building with traditional AI prompting tools, you would have to rely on pure text. So if we look at Lovable, for example, we have a text that says, build me a form with the first name input, last name input, email input, subject drop down, additional comment space, and on the right side, an image with different image selectors beneath the, the image, right? And the form should be for design hackathon, let's just say like that. So you'd have to kind of visualize it with pure text. And obviously you could, you know, be a little bit lazy. You don't want to write so much, or you could do it like this, but eventually you don't really get the results that you want. Maybe uh, certain things are not placed correctly. So if I were to press submit over here and we see how the actual design looks like, and as you can see, we get something like this, which it kind of understands uh, what we want. But again, there are, you have to be very specific with your design. And obviously the design looks very AI generated. That's like the main thing over here that we're trying to like find a cure for, right? Because you see with the gradient over here, the images are also kind of like, uh, I don't know, they don't look so nice. It's, it just screams out AI, gener AI generation, right? If I go like this, all right, we have like a nice drop down. It does understand what we want, but again, the design is not so nice. Now, alternatively, we have a file inside of Magic Path where you can basically it's called a drawing space and you can draw out things like this, right? So I basically just replicated what we'd had in Excaladraw and you can like duplicate things, duplicate different layers like this, you know, eventually move things around. If we wanted to make this like into like a little title space over here, we can do that. And we also have the ability to delete certain things, 
move things around, um, create new objects over here, like a circle. Let's say that this is like a drop down circle. We want to have that. We want to maybe move that and change the color to be like purple to indicate something. We might want to change the color of these to be something else so that it rep represents like an image. Maybe we can use blue, right? So now it's all blue. And then down here, this button can be like another one, like yellow, right? So we're just like kind of like creating like a very solid structure of what we want. So in this case, I have this. And, and then what we can do is that once you're done with this, there's two ways of doing this. You can either copy the SVG, which I'm going to do right now, and you can export the image just as like a backup plan, so to say. And then if I double click into a new component, I can say, let's, let's build out a form for a design or, or for a web design hackathon, for example. And then you can like, obviously, you know, tell it what exactly it should be based off of. So saying the different things that are going to be part of this form, like the first name, last name, input, email input, so on and so forth. And then we can say it should be based on this sketch, right? So that's where you basically paste that SVG code that I gave you. And additionally, you can also add that image reference so that there's like extra security that it's going to understand what you're building. And then you can click on submit. And what do we get? We get exactly what we asked for. And the best thing apart about this is that if you were to adjust the size as this is code, you see that it's all responsive all the way down to the mobile viewport. So this is exactly what we wanted and we can, you know, build on this. And the great thing about, about uh, Magic Path is that if you can double click over here and build the same thing, you can choose a specific theme, right? So let's say that we want to build this, but for like a Discord event. So we can choose Discord. That's a theme that I built, you know, a couple, couple weeks ago. And then at the end, we can say like, you know, let's build this um, in a Discord style. You can say like dark mode, for example. And as you can see, it's basically in the style of Discord with the same buttons, the same types of colors and all of that. So, and in the same exact layout that we wanted it to, to be in. So, so that's great. Now we can move this to the bottom because we don't really need this. So let me just move this down here. Let's just focus on this one. And over here, I asked it for three different options in the, in the uh, experience level over here, this little subject drop down. And what we can do What's great about about this tool that I was showing you is that you can not only like draw out general sketches, but you can even like draw out different types of features inside of this inside of this particular um, section, right? So if we don't want the options to look listed like this, like underneath each other, we can make like a component where the options are like bolted next to each other in like a different type of view, right? So. We can do that and basically go back over here and duplicate this, uh, make it underneath. And let's zoom in like this. And let's get this little rectangle tool again and draw a rectangle. And we're going to want to make this no fill and a black radius like this. And here, this is where I may want to like go like this, duplicate this two more times. So we have our three options. And then what we can do is we can use the text tool to say like, you know, this is option one, option one, right? Um, option two, and duplicate it again, option three. And then again, you know, we can just copy the SVG. And we can go back into our design. And then let's say, let's remove this Discord theme and let's just say, Let's style the dropdown selectors to be in the style of this sketch. Let's paste this like this, click on enter. Now, if I were to select this, we can see that we have beginner, intermediate, advanced in this exact layout that I asked for. So that's a pretty cool little adjustment that we did. Now, the cool thing about this tool as well is that you can make like interactive components like this. As you can see, it has some movement. This is a, a clock. As you can see, it's 9.40 p.m. my time. So um, the, the second is like the outermost layer, then the minute comes, and then the hour comes, and then there's like a point in the middle. And basically, this is, you know, created by, by someone in the community. Shout outs to Anton, by the way. And basically what he did is he got the drawing space and he drew out a circle and basically drew out like different numbers like this 59, 15, 7, 
and then just drew like different lines like this and eventually got something like that that like elapsed time like that i was just showing you right now another cool one that i saw uh, last week was by mikey also a member of the community drew out a title like this and just like a grid of like six different um squares not even they're not they're not all like in the same size even it's just a very very general sketch and eventually he created like an interactive soundboard where you can write a title and eventually even connect an api key this one this time it's like from 11 labs so you can generate different types of sounds so you can add a sound like let's say like a a a honking horn for example right click on generate sound and then we have like a honking horn sound that we can add and we can press on record and start recording different things as you can see over here and eventually stop this and save this recording so yeah guys that's pretty much it from my side it's a quick little tutorial on how you can go from just pure sketches like mind maps little little types of diagrams that you can build out and eventually use your creativity by getting those sketches putting them into a prompt box inside a magic path and then eventually like creating out different types of mini apps based on those little sketches so instead of having to depend on pure text to generate a design you can actually get started with just like bringing in different types of shapes and text together and actually starting that design from scratch and then using ai to actually boost or pimp out your ui so to say so yeah guys let me know what you think um let me know in the comments below and yeah hope to see you guys next time thank you so much for watching goodbye